Hello and welcome to the Business Standards Morning Show. I'm Kanishka Gupta and let's have a look at the stories for the day. Goods wagons carrying freshly cultivated wheat sacks from parts of north are rolling in near Kandla port in a tad bit of hurry now. They have to unload and come back again. War in Ukraine is clearly turning fortunes back home. Wheat at Kandla port is being procured at over 2400 per quintal now, about 300 rupees more than what it was a fortnight ago, while the government MSP is 2015 rupees per quintal. So, it's a win-win situation for everyone. Farmers are happy because they have started getting better rates for wheat than the government was offering them a few weeks ago. The government is happy as it will have to procure less wheat and its subsidy bill will plummet. Despite being the second largest producer of wheat in the world, India accounts for less than 1% of exports. Russia and Ukraine are major suppliers of wheat, accounting for about 30% of the global supply. Now, with a war being waged between the two nations, wheat exports from Russia have come to a standstill, and ports in Ukraine have halted commercial activity. This has left a gap that India is filling. Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently said that India should seize the opportunity to export wheat of the best quality as demand surges amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And it appears that the government and other authorities concerned have decided to act. This comes at a time when India's wheat exports have already been growing at a significant pace during the past few years. Let us examine where they are headed, what measures are being taken to give them a boost, and who are the major players involved. According to an agency report citing unnamed government sources, significant measures will be taken in next few weeks to establish India as a dominant exporter of high-quality wheat. Three primary measures will be implemented over the course of around 2 weeks. The first one is ensuring that government approved laboratories test the quality of wheat for export. The second is ensuring that extra rail wagons are available for transport. And the third one involves working with port authorities to give priority to wheat exports. Trade and market sources have told Business Standard that India's opening stocks of wheat in the central pool as on 1st April 2022 are expected to be the lowest in the last 3 years but they will still be much higher than the level required for maintaining a buffer and strategic reserve both government and trade sources have said that in FY22 wheat exports will be about 7.25 million tons this would be a record in the upcoming financial year exports might even touch 10 million tons if the current momentum is maintained this also depends on global market conditions remaining benign and outbound shipments not facing any hassle and this opportunity comes at a time when india's wheat exports were already rising at a fast clip according to the ministry of commerce and industry india's wheat exports surpassed 872 million dollars in the april october period of 2021-22 They had touched 243 million dollars in 2020 against 50 million dollars in 2016. The current price of Indian wheat is the cheapest among all global competitors. This is good news for the private sector, which had already stepped up to boost wheat exports. Out of the nearly 7.25 million tons of exports in FY22, over 50% has been done by ITC. Meanwhile, the rest has been shared between a clutch of multinational trading companies that include Olam Agro and Cargill. 
So, what are the challenges Indian traders will face if they want to export record quantities? Apart from sudden changes in global conditions, one of the only other bottlenecks in achieving exports of 10 million tons next year is if the government curbs exports to enable it to achieve the annual wheat procurement target for FY23. However, most analysts told Business Standard that in the coming financial year, the centre might not have to purchase the full target for wheat if the current interest shown by private players continues. A lower procurement of wheat along with lower carryover stocks is sure to have an impact on the food subsidy for FY23, a good portion of which comes from wheat. According to one report, in some parts of the country, commissioning agents and traders are seeking tax reliefs to cash in on the opportunity. For example, sellers in Punjab have reportedly been fielding inquiries from food retail giants and food grain exporters. But even as the demand grows, high taxes could play spoil sport. Consider the 3% each in market fee and rural development fund along with the 2.5% commission to agents and 1% service charges that they have to deal with. So, in Prime Minister Narendra Modi's words, Indian exporters have the golden opportunity to provide the best quality product with the best service to the world. It should not be a stopgap arrangement. Instead, Indian exporters should make it a permanent one and take the Indian wheat export to above 15 million tons per year. सब अच्छी दिख रही हैं यार कौन सी खरीदूं ये तो वही बात हुई चार हजार शेयर लिस्टेड है कौन सा लू वो तो सबसे आसान है तुझे फाइव पैसा नहीं पता अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा पर है चार हजार स्टॉक्स की रिसर्च टेक्निकल टूल्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडियाज डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा नाउ अब तो सबको पता है इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विद फाइव पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल द रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुल बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग Turbulent times indeed offer opportunities. Sandeep Bakshi took over the reins of ICICI Bank at a rough time. It was 2018. The reputation of the country's second largest lender was in tatters, and its balance sheet under government scanner. He steered the bank out of the troubled water in the last four years, winning back trust and onboarding more customers. He is Business Standards Banker of the Year. Our next report tells more about this turnaround, Zar. ICICI Bank's managing director and chief executive officer Sandeep Bakshi was chosen as the Business Standard Banker of the Year 2020-21 for turning around the private sector lender both in terms of performance and perception during his tenure of the past 3 and a half years. A jury of 5 members chaired by former RBI Deputy Governor SS Mundra unanimously chose the 61-year-old as the winner. Bakshi took charge of India's second largest private sector lender in October 2018. amid controversy surrounding his predecessor Chanda Kocher who had to step down over corporate governance issues only 10 banks qualified under the criteria used to select the contenders the jury took into account matters such as governance recent events hr practices the regulatory stance innovative practices and technology prowess to arrive at a conclusion when the choice finally came down to two large banks which had registered strong performance under both the leaders what clinched the decision in favor of bakshi was turning around the bank after inheriting a difficult legacy jury chair ss mundra said bakshi steadied the ship over the course of the last few years with a mature leadership while the bank improved on most of the parameters bakshi is credited with reviving the organizational morale also and bringing in collaborative management leadership the jury members concurred the bank rewarded 80000 frontline employees with an 8% pay hike during the covid-19 pandemic year One of the jury members highlighted that the turnaround under Bakshi was not just in the banking business but also in the subsidiaries. The banker has been with ICICI Group since 1986 and handled assignments across the group in ICICI, ICICI Lombard General Insurance, ICICI Bank and ICICI Prudential Life Insurance. He received a 2-year extension last year until October 2023. The media shy business leader who prefers to keep a low profile accepted business standards award but declined to comment further ICICI banks gross and net npas and bad loan ratios have consistently declined in the last 4 years 
while return on asset has almost doubled. The bank is well capitalized, has strong ratios, adequate provisioning and low bad loan ratios. For 2020-21, ICICI Bank reported a net profit of 16,193 crore rupees against 7,931 crore rupees in the preceding financial year. Its loan portfolio grew 13.7% year on year to 7.34 trillion rupees, while deposits went up by 21% year on year to 9.33 trillion rupees. ICICI Bank shares are up 130% in Bakshi's tenure so far. Under Bakshi, the bank is guided by two principles. The one bank, one ROE principle emphasizes the need to maximize the bank's share of profitable growth opportunities across all products and services. Whereas the fair to consumer, fair to bank principle emphasizes the need to deliver fair value to customers while creating value for shareholders. On the product side, feedback was given priority over targets, which meant that certain products were withdrawn because while they were good for the bank, they have not been so for the clients. ICICI Bank increased its presence rapidly in the credit card segment too. Co-branding and new launches have boosted credit card sales. Its co-branded credit card with Amazon Pay has been a huge success in the market. The bank believes leveraging digital technology is core to its business. Its iMobile Pay app is a testimony to the bank's execution in this area. The app has seen 5.3 million activations from non-ICICI bank customers. Yaal? Don't ask me, man. Then he got stuck in the stocks. With the stocks, he balanced bonds, insurance, gold. He's a lot of fun. Do you know how much money you have? Now everyone knows. There's a lot of money, all-in-one account. Download five pesa now. Now everyone knows. Investing made easy and rewarding with five pesa. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. The stock of ICICI Bank has tanked over 5% this year, but experts are still bullish on the private lender. Meanwhile, benchmark indices zoomed 2% yesterday after the US Federal Reserve hiked rates for the first time in three years. However, analysts don't see the RBI moving the needle on the rate hikes just yet as growth concerns linger and the geopolitical situation remains dynamic. Watch our next report to know more. In a first since 2018, the US Federal Reserve raised interest rates by 25 basis points to a target range of 0.25 to 0.5% on Wednesday. The Fed signaled hikes at all six remaining meetings this year, launching a campaign to tackle the fastest inflation in four decades. This comes even as risks to economic growth mount. The Fed also said it would begin allowing its $8.9 trillion balance sheet to shrink at a coming meeting without elaborating further. Stock markets on their part rallied globally as the rate hike was on expected lines. Besides, Fed Chair Jerome Powell's confidence that the American economy was strong and well positioned to handle tighter monetary policy boosted investor sentiment. The S&P BSE Sensex zoomed 1047 points to end at 57,864 levels, while the Nifty 50 shut shop at 17,287, climbing 312 points. Both the indices advanced 2% each led by realty, financial and metal stocks. However, analysts believe the US Fed's hawkish stance doesn't imply the RBI will hike rate in its April meeting as growth concerns linger. At present, we see upside risk to the domestic inflation scenario and downside risk to the growth outlook relative to the last set of forecasts that the MPC had released in February 2022. That policy review did not telegraph an impending change in April 2022. Given the uncertainty stemming from the impact of the lingering conflict and the geopolitical tensions, we do expect another status quo policy in April 2022, in spite of the rise in the February 2022 CPI inflation and a rather hawkish uh, commentary and dot plot coming in from the US Federal Reserve. While the MPC is likely to be averse to sacrificing domestic growth on account of inflation that is imported, we do believe that anchoring of inflationary expectations may warrant a less dovish tone of the upcoming policy review document. 
Subsequently, we expect a shallow rate hike cycle with two repo hikes in FY23, likely in the August and October policy reviews. Mark Matthews of Julius Baer too believes the Federal Reserve's 25 basis points rate increase does put pressure on the other central banks, including RBI. However, RBI has the reverse repo rate at its disposal, so it doesn't need to raise the benchmark rate immediately. One hand, um, uh, there, there is clearly a, uh, a move toward tightening in central banks globally because COVID is becoming endemic globally and therefore we can take away uh, the very easy uh, monetary conditions. We shouldn't allow them to remain in place and also because we have some very high inflation. Um, on the other hand, the RBI has voiced concerns about growth, uh, so we know they are uh, worried about that. And they uh, have shown that they'd be more interested in using reverse repo rates to take away liquidity than the prime rate. So. Um, I, I, I suspect that April will be a miss and they won't actually raise the prime rate until June. But uh, I wouldn't, as I say, put huge odds on that. And, and uh, I'd say it's 50-50. As regards equity markets, analysts believe global markets, including India, are hoping rising rates and de-escalation in the war will tame inflation. This, they say, will improve the market sentiment, but only in the second half of 2022. I think it's going to be a challenging year. We have inflation, we have rising rates, we have a war. Um, and the benchmark for world indices, which is the S&P, is down 9%. So um, I think it's going to be uh, choppy with a downside bias until we get more clarity on those three big issues that I just mentioned. Um, and I think we can get clarity on those. It's not impossible, but it'll take time and I don't expect it to happen until the summer. 150 basis point, quite a bit of that basically is already discounted in the market. I think this uh, really rally which you are seeing right now is coming because I think they are seeing some visibility as far as to the end of war. So that is one thing basically they are seeing. So once that goes through basically, then automatically commodity prices will come off. And somewhere the market is hoping basically saying that the inflation will ease off, commodity eases off and the uh, world becomes fully operational. So because this is largely supply side inflation, it is not demanded inflation. So somewhere I think the market is expecting, which may not see this kind of high. And that's why I think uh, it is uh, reacting positively to this news also. Overall, the near-term outlook remains volatile for the equity markets as the geopolitical situation remains fluid. Over the medium term, the markets will eye macroeconomic developments and rate hikes by the RBI likely in the later half of calendar year 2022. Domestic markets are closed today on account of Holi. क्या किया? Shares में trading. तुम्हें five पैसा नहीं पता? ओए! अब तो सबको पता है. Five पैसा पर मिलते हैं research tools, portfolio analytics और investment ideas भी. Download five पैसा now. अब तो सबको पता है. Investing made easy and reporting with five पैसा. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. From the markets, let us now move on to the future of mobility. Electric vehicles are increasingly marking their presence on the roads, challenging the monopoly of internal combustion engine counterparts. And battery swapping as a service will drive its growth in the days to come. Let us see what it is all about. Growing fuel prices, rising pollution level, and climate concerns are driving the growth of electric vehicles. But the concern about their high cost is also weighing heavy on everyone's mind. So to address this concern, the battery as a service model was born. Battery price makes up as much as 50% of an electric vehicle's cost. Battery as a service model helps customers save money at the time of purchase. Customers can pay during every swap or subscribe to battery subscription plans. In August last year, 
The government had also announced the sale of electric two-wheelers and three-wheelers without a factory-fitted battery. And this year, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman announced in her budget speech that the government will bring a battery swapping policy to boost the use of electric vehicles in the country in view of space constraints for setting up charging stations. Sitaraman also said that the private sector would be encouraged to develop sustainable and innovative business models for battery as a service to improve efficiency in the electric vehicle ecosystem. Swapping allows EV owners to replace depleted battery blocks for fully charged ready-to-go ones at swap stations. The technology is being tested for various segments, including e-two-wheelers, e-three-wheelers, electric cars, and even e-buses. Battery swapping stations can either be manual or automated. In a manual station, the batteries are placed and removed manually from the individual slots of the station by hand. The stations don't occupy much space. These are mainly used for two- and three-wheelers, as the battery pack sizes are smaller and can be handled by one person. Automated stations with robotic arms are used for four-wheelers as the battery packs are heavier. The main worry for an EV buyer is range anxiety or the worry that the battery will run out of power before a charging point is reached. And also the time that is taken in charging them. Swapping addresses both these problems. Battery swapping is designed to eliminate range anxiety as it is easier to set up a dense network of swapping stations even in urban areas. Not just this, electric charging takes time and Indian cities do not have physical spaces that can accommodate hundreds of vehicles when EVs become mainstream. In China and in the US, some companies have already set up automated swapping stations for cars, which is particularly useful for commercial fleet operators. While in India, several states including Kerala, Karnataka, Delhi, Haryana and Andhra Pradesh are providing incentives and subsidies to set up battery swapping stations. Sun Mobility, Lithium Power and ChargeUp are some of the battery swapping solution providers in India. Bengaluru-based Bounce recently launched India's first swappable battery scooter and also operates a battery swapping network. Reliance Industries and Britain's BP formed the joint venture for battery swapping in the country last year. Motorbike maker Hero Motocorp and Taiwan's Gogoro have also formed a partnership for swapping. According to Niti Aayog and Rocky Mountain Institute, about 80% of two- and three-wheelers and 50% of the country's four-wheelers would be electric vehicles by 2030 and battery swapping will drive this growth. Yeah, ice cream khai. Nahi yaar, kulfi. We Indians disagree on everything. But we agree, SBI is the banker to every Indian. Are SBI contactless debit card? I agree. SBI is the banker to every Indian. According to an estimate, an electronic two-wheeler could be 50% cheaper than its internal combustion engine counterpart over its lifespan. That's all for today. We will be back with more news and analysis on our next episode. Stay tuned and thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.